being in the ring. Hearns is on the road to what he hopes will be another championship. He'll fight Jeff McCracken in a scheduled 10-round middleweight bout. And Leonard, well, he'll be at ringside announcing the fight with our Gil Clancy and Tim Ryan. Let's check in with Tim now live for this preview. Tim? John, the undercard is underway here at Cobo Arena in Detroit, Michigan. Thomas Hearns is back home in front of a, what will be certainly a partisan crowd today as he takes on young Jeff McCracken. Of course, this will be his third fight as a middleweight at 160 pounds. Thomas Hearns, after losing the unification try of the welterweight title to Sugar Ray Leonard, moved into the middleweight ranks in December of 81 in Nassau, the Bahamas, the night that Ali retired after his loss to Burbick. Hearns against the veteran Ernie Singletary went the full 10-round distance, winning an unanimous decision, his first victory at 160 pounds. His opponent today, Jeff McCracken, an all-service champion as an amateur, unbeaten as a professional, claims to have sparred with Hearns while Hearns was preparing for the Leonard fight said he was unimpressed with his power. Hearns, on the other hand, doesn't remember that at all. No, he's not, he wasn't a former uh, spine partner of mine, which we've both been working together. And uh, something that came up where uh, we didn't get a chance to work. I know he knows, so I don't know why he's saying that. I know he can't be that punch drunk that he doesn't remember a year ago. But maybe he is if he doesn't remember. Well, there you have it, a rather poised and confident young Jeff McCracken, unbeaten in 16 bouts with 12 knockouts, an important middleweight bout for both young men. Hearns trying to prove himself as a middleweight, McCracken trying to get into the top 10. It's coming up shortly on CBS Sports Sunday. Let's go back now to John Tesh in New York. Thank you very much, Tim. It sounds like McCracken has something on his mind. Now, some of your listings may have shown the Mike Weaver-Randall Cobb WBA World Heavyweight Championship fight scheduled to be televised today. That fight was postponed when Cobb, of course, was injured in training against McCracken today. National Football League teams are back in camp. Mazda and Mazda Quality Products. And by Michelin Tires, the company that pioneered the radio. event that was held at the site of the first pro football Super Bowl. But this is a Super Bowl in a different sport. Says he's going to show Hearn's managers they made the mistake of their lives in underestimating him as an opponent. We'll be showing you that fight live shortly, but right now let's go back to the Super Bowl of motocross and our Ken Squire. Heard from your local station. <laughs> It is fight time now in Detroit. Let's go to Tim Ryan to set the stage for middleweights Thomas Hearns and Jeff McCracken. Tim? Well, John, yesterday we were outdoors in Warren, Ohio, where Boom Boom Mancini had the hometown crowd of 20,000 cheering him to victory over Ernesto Espana. Today, Thomas Hearns returns home to Detroit against young Jeff McCracken. It's the first time Hearns has been here since December of 1980. It was also here in Detroit in August of 1980 that Thomas Hearns won the WBA Welterweight Championship of the World. A stunning second round knockout of the Mexican champion Pepino Cuevas. After successfully defending his crown three times, the glory road came to an end for Hearns when he tried to unify the welterweight crowns against WBC champion Sugar Ray Leonard. After one of the most dramatic fights in years in Las Vegas, Nevada, the fight was stopped after 14 grueling rounds with Sugar Ray Leonard declared the winner. Hearns, meanwhile, moved on to the middleweight ranks, making his debut in Nassau, the Bahamas, against veteran campaigner Ernie Singletary. In his first bout at 160 pounds, Hearns went the 10-round distance, winning a unanimous decision. Then the second time out as a middleweight right here on CBS, February 1982 in Las Vegas against Mexican veteran Marco Serraldo, an easy knockout win in the first round for Thomas Hearns. Well, with us again as a special guest commentator today is the undisputed welterweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Leonard. Ray, I know you're real interested in watching Thomas Hearns' campaign as a, a middleweight. I'm curious to know your feeling about that. Always a question mark about somebody moving up in weight. Durant, for instance, great as a lightweight, had his problems knocking people out once he moved up. Well, Tim, I have a theory for that. Um, you take, for example, the Roberto Durant was a small wagon. He couldn't carry that much weight. As a lightweight, very effective. He was very strong. Once he moved to the, to the welterweight and to the middleweight, he wasn't that effective. Tommy Hearns is a large wagon. He can carry that weight. I don't see any major problems as far as his speed or his power being turned away. 
Thomas Hearns is a large wagon indeed, and he weighed in right at the 160-pound mark. Let's find out more about young Jeff McCracken. The youngster is getting a big opportunity here today. You're looking at Jeff McCracken during his amateur career in the Marines, where he won the All-Marine, then the All-Service title, and was also the national AAU champion in 1978. Inspired by Joe Frazier, he moved into the heavyweight ranks after a distinguished amateur career, where he racked up a record of 80 victories and just 12 defeats. Since turning professional, he has won 16 times with 12 knockouts, including victories over the likes of Joe Tiberi and Ben Serrano. He trained with Thomas Hearns and claims to be unimpressed with Hearns' punching power. I was, because everybody talked about how devastating his punching power was, but I was kind of surprised. To me, he didn't really have that much power, but he had real good speed and uh, sharpness. But as far as real power, it, he wasn't that, he hit that hard for a middleweight. For a welterweight, he probably did, but not for a middleweight. Jeff sees this as a tremendous opportunity against one of the top-ranked fighters in the world. This is my biggest fight as a pro and as amateur. This is the biggest fight of my boxing career. If I win this fight, which I plan to do, it just opens the door for a lot bigger things than this. Rash young Jeff McCracken talking very confidently. Gil Clancy, what do you think of this young man? Well, Tim, Jeff McCracken's been around. He's got a good, solid amateur background, undefeated as a, as a professional. But he's not a stylist. He's a brawler. He takes punches to give punches. And that could prove fatal against Tommy Hearns because I agree with Sugar Ray. I think Tommy Hearns is going to be a devastating middleweight. And it's a tough order for a kid with 16 fights to overcome a Tommy Hearns. All right. Well, speaking of Thomas Hearns, the crowd here at Cobo Arena, and it is a good one on a hot day in Detroit. They're watching him come into the arena right now. The man who is known in some circles as Hitman or the Motor City Cobra. He is certainly the most popular boxer in Detroit, Michigan. Thomas Hearns, the former WBA waterweight champion of the world, now campaigning as a middleweight, and this will be his third fight. 160 pounds. It'll come against young Jeff McCracken, who was unbeaten in 16 fights. Of course, has never been in against anybody the likes of Thomas Hearn. So it's an interesting campaign for Hearns en route to what he hopes will be a title shot against Marvin Hagler, and this should be an interesting stop along the way, because McCracken is a natural middleweight. He's been fighting at that weight all through his more than 100 about amateur career and 16 times as a professional. And so he is ready. He thinks he's the natural weight he doesn't think that Thomas Hearns is nearly as devastating at 160. We'll be finding out shortly here at Cobo Arena in Detroit, Michigan, when we return for CBS Sports Sunday, 10 rounds of middleweight boxing after these messages. Ring being greeted by former lightweight champion Hilmer Kenny, who just uh, left the ring, the other member of that Kronk Boxing Club. Former lightweight champion Homer Kennedy. There is Jeff McCracken from Santa Monica, California, born in Torrance, California, raised in Sand Point, Idaho, now fighting out of Santa Monica. And Mrs. Lois Hearns, the mother of Thomas, on hand here, uh, ready to watch her son in action in his third time as a middleweight. So let's now go up to the ring announcer, Jim Ingram. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the feature attraction of the afternoon, 10 rounds of professional middleweight boxing action. Introducing, to my left, weighing in at 161 pounds, his professional record, 16 victories, no defeats, with 12 KOs, from Santa Monica, California, the back attack, undefeated Jeff McCracken, McCracken. And his worthy opponent, in the red corner, to my right, Wearing white trunks with multicolored trim. At 159 and one quarter pound, his record, 34 victories, one defeat with 31 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the Motor City Cobra, Thomas Hearn. <laughs> Ten rounds of middleweight boxing well, action. there is no Three. doubt as to where this fight is coming from. As yesterday, it was a Mancini crowd. Today, it is a Thomas Hearns crowd. The referee is Harry Papa Carolomba. Stay there until I tell you to come back. That is a Greek name, I'm told, and a beauty indeed. Did a heck of a job on that, Tim, I'll tell you that. That might be the last mention he gets. Now, I want you to protect yourselves at all times. 
Do you have any questions? We do not have the saving by the bell in this state. Do you understand? Any questions? Either one of you. Good luck. Come on at the bell. Scoring is by the three judges at ringside, Stuart Kirchenbaum, Rose Grable, and Chip Macy. As we see the tail of the tape, McCracken coming in at 161. Hearns at 159 and a quarter, just under the 160 limit. And they were allowed an extra pound for this 10-round bout. Scoring on the 10-point must system, nine or fewer. To the loser of a round, there can be 10-10 even rounds. Three knockdowns in any one round would stop the fight. This is round one. Thomas Hearns in white. Jeff McCracken in red. Tim, it's amazing with Thomas Hearns. He was a welterweight in his, when he boxed Sugar Ray Leonard. Now he looks like a light heavyweight. He is big on top, big and strong. Well, Gil, as I was telling Tim, uh, Tim Thomas can carry that kind of weight because he's tall and he's lean. So that, that kind of weight won't bother him at all. Jeff McCracken, who calls Joe Frazier his idol, says that's the man who got him started boxing when he saw the first Frazier Ali fight. Likes to think that he fights that kind of style. He wants to bore in, get to the body, knows he has to get inside. He'll take a few to get there if he has to. And he can count on taking a few of those long left jabs at Tommy Hearns. Well, McCracken, when he comes in, he must keep that right hand up because Tommy fades back with that left hook, that common left hook. 24-year-old former Marine fighting out of Santa Monica. At the moment, Tom, Thomas Hearns' jab is right on the mark, Tim. And as Ray said, he'll set him up with a big punch with that jab. The combination, first solid one scored by Hearns, the left and the right. Thomas Hearns, born in Memphis, Tennessee, one of nine children. Boxing star of his family and certainly of the whole state of Michigan. start for Thomas trying to land a big right hand setting it up carefully with the jab fighting a poised fight heavy favorite of course against the relatively little known Jeff McCracken but McCracken is yet to taste defeat as a professional McCracken has to get more uh, head fights because what he's doing he's walking straight and towards Tommy and Tommy with that reach he's going to continue to land punches Turn scored with another combination of the head in the last exchange under a minute to go, round one. Back and nearly as tall, just about three quarters of an inch shorter than Thomas Hearns. Giving away about four or five inches in reach, however. seconds to go round one. McCracken so far unable to get inside. That's where he wants to be. And that was his game plan. Oh, Hearns is sharp shooting with that jab, Tim. He's keeping right on the end of that left hand. Very, very effective punch. Wow, left hook by Hearns missed. Final seconds of the first round. Scheduled for 10 here at Cobo Arena in Detroit. Round number two scheduled for 10. Thomas Hearns in white. Jeff McCracken in red. A middleweight bout with Hearns coming in at 159 and three quarters. We talk about McCracken's amateur career. Of course, Hearns was an outstanding amateur. Started boxing at age 10. In 1976, the National AAU and National Golden Glove finalist won those titles in 1977 and turned pro in 1977 after winning 155 amateur bouts. Ray, you were very effective against Thomas Hearns inside. How is this kid going to get in there and start working to the body? Well, Gil, what McCracken has to do, he has to do more fame, get inside. He, on occasion, he's able to land that overhand right, but he's going to need more than that to stop a Tommy Hearns. Body shots will be a factor here. Well, I know you were very effective with those body shots. Hearns so far able to keep McCracken at bay. In fact, the only solid punch landed by McCracken was that right hand lead moments ago if you give Tommy Hearns a, if you're a stationary target with Tommy Hearns he can peck you all night long but with McCracken he's a big guy he's a durable opponent so he I think what he's trying to do discourage Tommy uh, as far as power is concerned but that's the wrong approach well eventually it's got to take its toll no matter how much you try to shake it off you're still getting hit 
Oh, he's trying to out jab Tommy Hearns, and Tommy Hearns has got that jab that's like a snake coming out there. Oh, solid right hand by Hearns. That wobbles McCracken, and he's in trouble. Big right hand, but McCracken battles back. Tim, that's what he's noted right for. Hand. McCracken is known for that, Tim. Now he Hearns into the ropes and scored with a good short right hand. McCracken with a good punch. Then we, we mentioned that he gets hit, but he punches back when he gets hit. No big punch for himself, but he takes a great wallop. And he took one in. Action heating up in round two. Hearns with another combination. Under a minute to go in the second round. Tommy has to be very cool when he's inside with McCracken because, as Gil was saying, McCracken comes back when he's hit, and when he's resting when he's hurt. The worst place for McCracken to be is where he is right now, out there at long range. Even when he was hurt, when he rushed Tommy Hearns and started the punch, he was more effective. He can't stay out there and be picked apart. And there it is. Right hand. And another right hand. After the left of the body. And McCracken in difficulty again. Taking the eight count. He's on his feet. Get McCracken. A right hand, a left of the body, another right hand. He tells the referee he's all right. We're in the second round, under 30 seconds to go. Hearns trying to finish him off. McCracken showing his mettle. Another combination lands. And a dazzling combination by Hearns, including an uppercut. McCracken still on his feet. Another right hand lands. Hearns firing away. McCracken is down. He goes. It looks like he was pushed into the ring. They're rolling it a knockdown. And he's taking a standing eight count. His handlers are. They didn't hear the bell, Tim. The referee didn't hear the bell. He's supposed to be the bell sitting either. down. We didn't hear the bell either. The round is over. Came in, but the referee did not hear the bell. Well, shades of yesterday in Warren, Ohio, at the end of the sixth round, the Mancini stopped Espana. McCracken getting some work in his corner, but this fight is still underway. Let's, uh, underway. Let's go back to round two and see the knockdown. Well, here you see McCracken at long range where he shouldn't be, and there he goes. Well, Tom was able to measure McCracken with that left hand. Kept that thing, and here he is. You see it again. Tommy comes home with the overhand right. McCracken is out of it at this point here. Right near the end of the round, he was knocked into the ropes, and it appeared that that was not a real clean shot that knocked him into the ropes, but he did go down. The referee started to count. The bell sounded. The referee didn't hear the bell, but the round was over. And meanwhile, McCracken had gotten to his feet. So we're going to go into round number three. Two knockdowns for Thomas Hearns in that second round. Hearns and White, McCracken and Red. McCracken has only been on the canvas once before in his young professional career. And of course, he has never been stopped. He is unbeaten. Never been stopped as an amateur or a pro, Tim. He's been in with some pretty good punches. For example, Dwight. Alex Ramos, they couldn't stop him. Slight cut over the left eye of McCracken. Turns measuring, measuring, trying to land the one clean blow that would put McCracken away. A good strategy for McCracken would be trying to smother Tommy's punches. That's I right, Ray. Right. That's exactly what he should be doing, but he's out there at long range again. He has to get inside and brawl. That's his thing. Third round action, scheduled for 10. Thomas Hearns, third bout as a middleweight. Thomas Hearns just used two feints that I never saw before. I thought he was going to fly. More blood from that cut over the left eye near the bridge of the nose of McCracken. McCracken just unable to land anything against Hearns. A couple of overhand rights, one in round one, one in round two, that's about it. Tim, he's waiting for Tommy Hearns, and he shouldn't wait. That's his problem. What well, I point to bring out is the fact that this additional weight that Tommy's carrying is not affecting his speed at, at all. That's right, Ray. He looks great. Looks great. He looks like a light heavyweight. He is a big guy. Big does and strong. Does his hand quick. speed look as uh, quick to you, Ray, as it did when he was a welterweight? Well, when I put up, I wasn't there to uh, cooperate with him. But Tommy has tremendous hand speed. For a large guy, it's a rarity. And also, when he's fighting these bigger guys, they're a little slower and they're a little easier to hit. A little more blood from that cut. The 
right corner of the left eye near the bridge of the nose of Jeff McCracken. You know, when you're in a fight, you have to have a game plan. Now, I'm trying to figure out just what McCracken's game plan is. What is he trying to do to win this fight? Any idea, Ray? Well, McCracken's a methodical fight. He's straight up, and um, I think he relies upon his power. Under a minute to go in this third round. McCracken is trained by Chuck Bodak, managed by Norman Henry. And you need more power for Tommy Hearns. You have to have a strategy. And there's 30 seconds now to go with a combination landed by Hearns. Solid left jab there by McCracken, his best jab of the fight, but Hearns coming in. He has to do something different. He has to change his height. He should be bending up and down, going side to side. He stays right there. You Final know where second. he is all the time. Final second. Dodge Coleman. Round number four, Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard, watching Thomas Hearns in white, Jeff McCracken in red. Eddie Aliana working on the cut in McCracken's corner, did a good job. That cut in the uh, corner of the left eye near the bridge of the nose. Now a little razzle-dazzle from Thomas Hearns. Very confident because he's been able to hit McCracken at will and not get hurt himself. And he's going to continue to do that, Gil. I mean, Tim, as long as uh, McCracken walk, he's walking in a straight line towards Thomas. Does, he doesn't change his height, doesn't change direction, just coming right in a straight line, Ray. He can get you nailed any time. Hearns trying to load up on the right, and McCracken gets him to the corner, landed some shots to the body. McCracken trying to keep Hearns pinned in there, but Tommy battles his way up. That's a good place for uh, McCracken to have Tommy against the rope or against the rope uh, the corner. That's his only chance inside. He's, he said in his pre-fight strategy that he was going to get inside, but he's really not making that much of an attempt at it. Well, Gil, he needs to get him a good time in the corner. That was a great exchange. Great exchange from both fighters. He's waiting for Hearns instead of getting off. He's got Hearns in the Hearns corner, and he lands a good combination to the head. The Kraken's best combination of the fight. Hearns just resting over there now on the ropes right in his own corner. McCracken shouldn't be waiting now. He should be punching. That's right. He stands there. He's what I call being stuck in mud. He's waiting, waiting, waiting. Let the hands go. That's what he should be doing. Hearns inviting him in, waiting to counter, but McCracken now finally starting to throw punches. Hearns backed him up momentarily with a right hand. Thomas doesn't seem concerned at all about the way this fight is going. Then when you're in there, you always have to be concerned. Anything can happen. You get a cut eye, you can hurt your hand. If you can get a guy out, you're supposed to get him out of there. McCracken landed a combination again in the corner. Hearns staying there, under a minute to go. Tommy should not be in that in that corner. He's getting a little too overconfident. He should carry him back to the center of the ring because he's so effective there. Combination again, that big left jab, starting it for Hearns, backing McCracken away. You can see the difference of how effective Tommy Hearns is in the center of the ring as he was against the ropes. It's a major difference. More blood from that cut over the left eye of McCracken. Under 30 seconds to go, round four. McCracken also has a cut under his right eye, Tim. His face is starting to break up now. Those sharp punches of Hearns are really getting to him. Maybe a little blood from the nose of Thomas Hearns. The only visible damage on him so far. Seconds now of round number four, scheduled for 10 at Cobo Arena in Detroit. Thomas Hearns in one, McCracken in red. McCracken was down twice in round number two, but Hearns has been unable to catch up with him since then. And while we scored the fourth round for Hearns, it was also McCracken's best round when he forced Hearns into the corners twice and did his best scoring. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard, live on CBS Sports Sunday. Next week, Alexis Arguello and Kevin Rooney at 140 pounds with Arguello moving up in weight like Thomas Hearns has, and you'll see that on CBS Sports Saturday, 4.30 Eastern time. McCracken trying to load up with the right hand, never landed. McCracken needs to go to Tommy's body. He's yet to throw a body punch. Tim McCracken does not have the reputation of a big puncher. <clears throat> not at all. He's known as a body puncher and what he calls the Mac attack, but uh, he's not either been trying it or able to get inside one or the other. 
Thomas is doing a paint job on him now, Tim. Michelangelo job. Well, short with that right hand. My experience with Thomas is when he worked that jab to the body to the head, he's trying to set you up for an overhand right. He has good concentration, doesn't he, Ray? He really sees his target. Very good concentration, too. Talk about him fighting at 154. Wilfred Benitez, that one uh, just talked so far. Marvin Hagler, middleweight championship bout, also in the talk stage. Be interesting watching Thomas Hearn's career. Been getting much work. Hasn't been in the ring since February against Geraldo here on CBS. Under a minute to go. Round number five. McCracken gets in position to throw a shot to the body, but he just stops. Just doesn't get off, Ray. That's, that's right. He has to get off first. And then he should go right back and stay there. Instead, he's right back outside again. Okay, the same as the cracker has to set up before he throws a punch. Well, he's always been known as a brawler. His, his best thing he's been able to do is take a great punch. Never been knocked out. Landed a right hand of the chest that backed up Kearns momentarily. Under 30 seconds to go. We're down indeed under 15 now in round number five. Kearns missing with a combination. Huge right hand. Final seconds. Round number five. Number six, unbeaten Jeff McCracken against once beaten Thomas Hearns and the White Trunks Hearns in front of his hometown crowd here in Detroit. We have him pitching a shutout through five rounds, two knockdowns in round number two, but McCracken so far has uh, survived but done little else for the last three rounds. does not get McCracken out of there. Of course, uh, there will be some observers who will wonder about his power as a middleweight. Well, I don't have any uh, questions about Tommy in the middleweight division. I think that he has a great future there. The welterweight division is a very dangerous division. McCracken with Hearns on the ropes over there. That's where he's done best. He let, he let Tommy walk right off the ropes that time. Yes, he oh, did. He's hurt again. Right hand by Hearn. Wobbled McCracken. He's in difficulty trying to hang on. Hearn peppering with uppercuts. McCracken doing a good job of grabbing him, trying to smother those punches, and he survives that attack. Tim, I think he has another cut over his left eye. I think it's two cuts there now. Again, backed up with a right hand, and that brings McCracken back out to the middle with a flurry. He's fought best when he's been hurt in this fight. Well, that's when he becomes a brawler. I don't think, I don't think McCracken's going to get away this time. A left and a right scored by Hearns. Tommy's steering him around the ring beautifully, setting him up and hitting him with everything but the kitchen sink. Another combination with much more blood over the face of McCracken. Hearns trying to knock him down. McCracken just determined to stay up. Trying to smother the punches, but not throwing any of his own. Tim, that's that Marine Corps spirit. They just don't give up. Tommy may punch himself out. Like to alert our local stations along the line. We'll go to a station break at the end of this round. Unless there is a knockout, there's under a minute to go. Round number six. You know, if you look at, now watch Tommy punches now. They're not as sharp because he threw a lot of punches on McCracken. McCracken, as durable as he is, is able to take it. He's bad. Got to be a little discouraging to Thomas. And again, we point out he hasn't been in the ring for real since February. Tom, Tim, his mouth is wide open. He's breathing kind of heavily now, Tommy. He's expended a lot of energy. There was a slow left hook, Ray. It wasn't that sharp turn's left hook just then. And then 30 seconds to go on round six. Jeff McCracken has definitely shown he can take a punch. A solid right hand wobble McCracken again. He was wide open for it. Hearns didn't have everything on it. He does appear arm weary. Final seconds. We'll return with more boxing after this word from your local station. 
This is CBS. He continues his quest for an unprecedented fourth world title as he meets Kevin Rooney in a junior welterweight clash. And Jeff McCracken receiving some more attention on those cuts between rounds. This is number seven. Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Ray Leonard with Thomas Hearns having a lot of difficulty against Jeff McCracken. He knocked him down twice in the second round, and he has certainly been dominating the fight, but McCracken has showed how tough he is. For that six round, Tim, I just knew it was over for McCracken, but I'll take my head off to the guy. The guy was really a tough opponent. Hearns showing now some signs of fatigue, as he did in round six. He got arm worry, no doubt about it. The mouth started to show open, and you can see that again already. Had to be a little discouraging for him, right? What does it feel like when you're tattooing a guy like he was, and, and nothing's really happening? Well, when I fought Tom in the sixth round, I punched myself out of a very arm weary, and it took me two rounds to uh, get back together. Now let's see what Hearns does here against Jeff McCracken, but McCracken should be taking advantage of that fact. This hasn't been busy enough there. He tried that right hand lead and he landed it. The right hand seems up days, Tony. Hearns trying to. The Kraken should get off now. He's waiting a little too long to get off. Sometimes you say to yourself, this really can't be happening. Am I hurting Tommy Hearns? I think he did hurt him that time. Seventh round, scheduled for 10. Now the Kraken should be continuing to rush Tommy. Just doesn't get off quick enough, Ray. Again, we'd like to alert our local stations along the line. At the end of this round, we'll be going to a 30-second station break. That hook landed from McCracken. A little blood from the nose of Hearns again. That was a good shot. McCracken threw to Tommy's body. He should throw more of those. He has to let it all hang out. That's what he has to do the way young Ray Mancini did yesterday. Didn't worry about getting tired. Didn't worry about anything. As hot as it was, he just threw those punches. That's the only chance that Jeff McCracken has in this fight. Well, McCracken is starting to uh, pick up the pace a little bit more. And he's starting to throw more body shots now. Left to the body, left to the head, and Hearns countered back with a right hand. Scored. Under a minute to go, round seven. Referee Harry Papakaralumbus has been doing a fine job throughout this fight. Practically invisible presence, letting the two boxers work. Ray, is there any special punch that you'd throw if you were McCracken to get yourself inside? Well, that left jab, and uh, he has a stiff left jab deal. I think the left jab would get McCracken closer to Tommy, but he, all he does is parries. He kicks it out. He flares it out. Meanwhile, Hearns continues to snap his jab effectively under 30 seconds to go round seven. Snapping back the head of McCracken at will. McCracken has stopped punching. Slip punches. He just slipped the left jab and he didn't punch. Had a great opportunity. We'll return with more boxing after this word from your local station. Into the corner of the of uh, McCracken and you see Eddie Aliano, a stuff man working on that same cut. And doing a pretty good job here as we begin round number eight. Two weary warriors come out there now, both of them not exactly leaping off the stools. But Hearns in much the better shape. Tim, it's about time. Long. It's about time if you're in good condition to get your second wind. And if Tommy Hearns or McCracken gets a second wind, they could really be very, very effective. Bill Clancy with Sugar Ray Leonard, Tim Ryan, live on CBS Sports Sunday. And round middleweight bout, the third of his career for Thomas Hearns. You know about that second win, Ray. You, you, you threw quite a bit of punches in the sixth round with Tommy, then you took it easy a couple of rounds, and all of a sudden you were fresh as a daisy again. That's true, Gil. It took me about a one or two rounds just to, to really get my second win, and by then, I was good as new. Back and trying to get inside, and again, Hearns jabbing effectively to keep him out. Tim, but what he does, he gets in pretty good position, but he doesn't get off. He doesn't move his hands. He has to move both hands, take his chances. I don't like where McCracken's reaching when he's trying to land punches on Tommy because he's the right hand. He's vulnerable for the overhand right each time. Burns just landed it and reopened that cut. Over the left eye of McCracken. McCracken is starting to look very, very weary and very tired, and he's hurt. He's wobbled again on a combination from Hearns. Legs starting to he's, go under McCracken. He's ready now, Tim. Back to get go much further. Hearns sensing it, banging to the he body. Go much the referee further. watching it, saying, that's it, he can do no more. Couldn't get the hands up. It is a knockout victory in the eighth round for Thomas Hearns. 
and a standing ovation from the partisan crowd in Kobo Arena. A combination out in the middle of the ring seemed to really stun McCracken. He backed up into the ropes, was unable to keep his hands up. Kearns hit him a few more times, and the referee kindly stepped in. So Jeff McCracken showed uh, his toughness and his courage, but Thomas Hearns again showed his class. And with a little bit of that second win, evidently here in round number eight, had enough to put Jeff McCracken away. And there is Thomas Hearns successfully concluding his third middleweight bout. And uh, we'll have a chance to talk to him to find out where he would like to go from here. Getting a test from Jeff McCracken today, at least in terms of stamina and durability. On our scorecards, we gave Hearns every round. He had McCracken down twice in the second round. And McCracken after that uh, just apparently surviving and not able to get any sustained offense going against the long reach and sharp punching of Thomas Hearns. There's a look at Hearns and his mother Lois is in the ring with him. Happy Mama has enjoyed her son's ring career, except for that one night against our Sugar Ray Leonard in Las Vegas. The only blemish on his otherwise undefeated record as a professional. Now let's go back and take a look at the action in round eight that concludes with the referee stepping in. Watch for the combination that comes in the middle of the ring. I'm not sure how far back we are. There we are, 26 seconds. Uh, this is round number seven we're into here in round number seven and uh, so we're back in the ring and uh, we'll uh, reorganize our uh, replay and as we look at Thomas Hearns let's return to New York and John Tesh. Thank you very much Tim Ryan. Now we'll be going right back to Tim but still to come today on CBS Sports Sunday the latest breaking sports developments including all the day's baseball highlights and next developments including all the day's baseball highlights. And next week, as Hearns did today, another fighter will be looking for a title shot by stepping up in weight class. He is Alexis Arguello, WBC World Lightweight Champion. With lightweight champ Alexis Arguello in the ring, the sights and sounds are familiar. But the next time Arguello enters the ring, it will be as a junior welterweight in a non-title fight Saturday, July 31st against Kevin Rooney on CBS. Rooney is tough. He has a record of 19-1 and, and has the respect of Arguello. He's a good boxer. He threw a lot of punches. And all, all worse, he's a fighter who can give problems to everybody. Arguello has already won the featherweight, junior lightweight, and lightweight titles. If he goes on to win the junior welterweight, he will be the first person to have won four titles. Well, this will be a great honor, even if I don't get the title. It will be a great honor to be the first man to try to get four titles. To win that fourth title, Arguello will have to first beat Kevin Rooney, and then the junior welterweight title holder, Aaron Pryor. But Arguello knows he cannot take Rooney for granted. Let me face first uh, Kevin Rooney and then well, we might have the chance to talk about next fight will be, if it's possible, to fight with Aaron Pryor. Well, we will know in one week if Arguello is on his way to title number four. Again, that's Arguello against Rooney in a scheduled 10-round junior welterweight fight from Atlantic City to be seen live next week on CBS Sports Saturday. Now let's go back live to Tim Ryan in Detroit. Tim? Yo! We're back here at the Cobo Arena in Detroit, where a happy Detroit crowd has seen Thomas Hearns for the first time since December of 1980. They enjoyed you here. Thomas, uh, let's talk first about the fact that this was your third middleweight bout. You were in there against a real strong guy. Did you expect it to go as long as it did? Well, I expected a very rough fight out of Jeff. Uh, Jeff Sullivan shows to be a very strong fighter, which no one has uh, knocked him down. He didn't knock him out, so I came in expecting for a hard fight. I trained very hard. And I know I had to do good. How about the layoff? You haven't been in the ring for real since February. Was that a factor? Well, it was a big factor. You know, um, trying to prepare yourself for a fight after not fighting in five months. You've been off for five months. It's kind of difficult to get back in the swing of things. 
Let's go back into that eighth round here and take a look at the action where you finally were able to stop this young man. I think it's a combination out in the center of the ring that really kind of wobbled him and he backed up. You describe what's going on here. Looked like you were breathing a little hard in round seven. Well, it's totally different, like I say, trying to carry the extra weight and having fought in five months. Yeah. It was kind of a little difficult for me, but uh, I was able to adjust to it. I just slow my pace down and try to set him up for the shots I want to hear. He's a much bigger guy, so it takes a little bit more than it is to, to knock out a welterweight than it is to knock out a middleweight. You have to give a little bit more to knock out the bigger guy. That was the combination, uh, I believe, was the one that really finished him was out in the middle of the ring because he started to back up and his legs were gone. Well, Did you sense it? Yeah, I sensed it because I started using looping punches in order to get to it because he kept his hands up pretty well, so it made it very difficult for me. So I started, like, coming around the side. All right, well, now, Ray Leonard says that moving up in weight shouldn't hurt you at all. He was impressed with your hand speed here today. What about punching power? Ray, uh, I think maybe that's a question that, uh, that you can ask uh, Tommy in terms of how he felt in, in, in that regard today. Well, I think Tommy's performance exemplified that uh, his power is still there. And, Tom, I know fully well that you felt very comfortable carrying that kind of weight. Well, I felt comfortable in the earlier rounds, but as we got on, Around, around the seventh round, I started sort of feeling the weight difference, you know. Uh, like I said, trying to carry that extra weight, it presented a small little problem for me. So I had to slow myself down, take a pace, a pace that I felt very comfortable with in order to get to this man. It was a good fight for Tommy. Sure was. You know, I, I just love seeing you two guys together. Two of the most outstanding boxers in our time. Right, without fighting, Ray. Standing here together, uh, two of the really respected people of their profession, Sugar Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns. And what about, uh, what What do you want to do next now? Because Benitez, Hagler, what do you want to do? Well, I think I'm going to take another tune-up fight. And after this next tune-up fight, maybe I'll go for it. I'll go for the championship next. I hope it'll be Benitez. I'm looking forward to it, for a fight with Benitez. And, um... I think that I can do very well. Benitez seems to be a very good boxer, or counter puncher mostly. And if I can stay at a distance where he can't use his counter move, I think it would be a much easier fight. Ray, you think Thomas would be all right at 154 as well? I think Tommy Gary, he can go from welterweight away to middleweight because he, when he fought me, he was still strong. And as he fighting here as a middleweight, he still looks very effective. All right, Sugar Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns together here in the ring again. We thank everybody here in Detroit for Gil Clancy, Tim Ryan, Sugar Ray Leonard returning it out of John Tesh.